YouTube it's Satch, welcome to Drive81. You join me here in the cockpit of this 2008 Audi A4 B8 model. It's a two litre turbo diesel. It has 143 brake horsepower from the factory that is. And I'm going to talk about five things that I actually hate about this car. Hate is a very strong word because I do like this car. I actually feel that this car is almost the perfect family car. However, with all cars, there are a few things that I just need to get off my chest. So here goes, let's get into it. Five things I hate about this car. So the first thing that I'm not keen on in this car is the heavy steering. I've driven a few of these cars and they all seem to have heavy steering. And even when they've been into the dealerships for getting work done and servicing and repairs, it's never been picked up and it's never been pointed out that the steering is heavy. So I think it must just be a characteristic of the car. It's mainly noticeable when you're doing slow speeds like I'm doing now, just really doing a turn at slow speeds. And it's not so bad, you can see how I'm not struggling, but it's certainly more work than it should be. And it's not so bad once you're up to speed. Once you're up to speed, hitting sort of 20 miles, 30 miles an hour, then the steering is, it's still a little bit heavier, but it's certainly very easier. Now I'm going through with 41 miles per hour here and the steering is absolutely fine now. Heavier than I would expect it to be in a BMW, heavier than I would expect it to be in a Mercedes-Benz C-Class or E-Class or any Mercedes-Benz to be honest with you. So that's the first thing, heavy steering. Alright, so the next thing that I hate about this car is the fact that the hookup for audio options are very poor. It's a 2008 car, so I'm not expecting 2018 technology. However, in 2008, USB ports were very much mainstream. Auxiliary ports, they were very much mainstream. Uh, Bluetooth for audio, very much mainstream. However, this car has none of them. Now, I'm not expecting a 50,000 pound car and I know it's a car which is about what 20 27 28,000 pounds but those three things I'm sure you could get them added after on the aftermarket for about a hundred pounds so we're not talking high-end options we're just talking really sort of low level basic options that I think any car should have this car just doesn't have it what we need to what we need to stick with is obviously the radio CDs it's just it's just one of those things in this car if, if you're not happy with it then there's not a lot you can do um, so that's another thing that I just I don't hate the car because of it it's just it feels a little bit restricted in what you can do with regards to your audio streaming okay next up I get that this car is 10 years old and a lot of 10 year old cars that I've driven, some are similar, some are completely worlds apart. And I'm talking about rattles and vibrations in the cockpit here. So it's a 10 year old car and well, as I, the road I'm going over now is quite bumpy so we are getting a few rattles, vibrations. I do understand we've got two kid seats in the back so they do contribute but when the kid seats or not in the car, the rattles and vibrations, they do continue. I mean, I'm not sure how well you can hear this, but this is the, the center armrest. 
and I'm just going to put my, my elbow on it. I don't know how well you can pick that up, but that's an indication of the rattles of my hands against, you know, the, the trim pieces which are quite cheap looking. Not cheap looking, cheap, cheap feeling. Um, and this is this is the this the, this is the S-Line model, and it's Audi's signature car. So I believe they could have done a bit better with regards to that. Overall, though, it's not it's not too bad. However, I feel in the Mercedes-Benz equivalent and the BMW equivalent, there are no rattles and vibrations. So I'm just a little bit disappointed in that. Driving along quite smooth road now, and it's fine. So it's obviously just as we're going over the bumpy road. Uh, so it's just one thing to bear in mind. Okay, so the next thing that I heard about this car is this is the 143 brake horsepower option. Two litre diesel TDI and to me, I don't know, maybe it's, it's because I'm used to driving more powerful cars, but the two litre turbo 143 horsepower option is underpowered. I just feel like it's just got, everything else I drive seems to have so much more power, so much more torque. And this really disappointed me. Now I have found a solution to this problem. I will explain, sorry, I'm not sure if I explained it at the, front of the, at the start of the video. Uh, this is my old car. It's not, it's not mine now, so I borrowed it back from the guy that owns it now to do a few reviews on it, on things I hate, things I love, things that will break, etc. So look out for those on the channel. I'm, I'm rambling here. Um, so what I did when I owned the car was put in a, you can buy these plug and play chipset boxes for turbo diesel engines, and they're really good. The one I've got here is, they call it a race chip. Now I've seen bad reviews on race chip online, but I decided to take the plunge. It was about 120, 25 pounds. Um, and that, honestly, this makes a massive difference to this car. The factory figures state that it's put it up to about just under 165 brake horsepower. You might, 160, 165 brake horsepower. Um, an extra 61 foot pounds of torque. So this car now, it feels so much more torquier and the high end you're getting out of this car, it gets to where you want to be so much quicker. And it makes this car so much more enjoyable, so much more usable and so much more like a sports saloon should be. And the engine sounds really good once you get it up into the high rev ranges. Which takes me on to the final thing that I don't like about this car. And it's the lack of exhaust tone. I understand it's a two litre diesel and it's not a Ferrari, it's not a Lamborghini. Um, but I just wish it had, it's got nothing at all. It's got no nice sounding exhaust. And to be honest, it may as well just be a 1.2 litre Fiesta for the exhaust sound that comes out of the back of this. I just wish it had a little bit more grunt I mean, the engine sounds good, as I say. But you're not getting any, any of that sound out the ex exhaust. All of that sound, you're only hearing inside the cabin. Um, so that's it. Those are the five things that I, I... I think hate is a strong word. I would be more happy to say things that just have a slight niggle when I'm driving the car. But overall, I love the car. It's a, it's a perfect saloon car. The only reason I sold this car was because uh, we were getting a, a company car through the wife's work, so we got a car for free, so I'd only had this car for about, probably not even a year, to be honest with you, um, and we found out we were going to get a car on her company policy, so uh, this was no longer required, however, I'm fairly happy and confident to say that if, if we didn't get the company car, we would still own this car. It's a great, great family car, You've got plenty of space in the boot, plenty of space in the rear for the kids. It's now, it's very powerful. You can take it on any road trips. It's extremely versatile, but a few niggles that let it down. 
So that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, we'll have lots more reviews and lots more videos on this Audi A4. Obviously lots of other cars as well coming and going. Um, also don't forget I'm giving away a Porsche Boxster 986. All you need to do to be in with the chance of winning that car is simply be a subscriber to this channel. Once I've hit 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to be choosing somebody at total random and they're going to win this, uh, not this car, but the Porsche Boxster 986. So thanks for watching, please like, please subscribe and I'll see you next time. <laughs>